Welcome back guys to another one. Today let's play with another kit from Neo Forza, but this time one that ticks so many boxes as you're about to see. So let's get into it. When it comes to RAM you have to tackle the right equilibrium regarding capacity, speed and latency. You can't overdo it in one direction since it will affect the equation too much and thus negating any real performance gains. For example, choosing a kit with too much frequency you would end up having to sacrifice capacity and even the latency. Or if you go with a higher capacity kit you would have to settle for a low speed spec one. Well not anymore since with this Mars RGB kit from Neo Forza you get the best of everything. Max capacity in a dual channel mode for desktop consumer grade DDR4 and enough speed to satisfy any task. Suffice to say that DDR4 is still pretty relevant even in today's market with DDR5 just being released and it retails for around 365 bucks on newegg.com. I've had the pleasure of covering these kits in the past so visually they are the same across the Mars range. Thus on the front of the packaging you have a cutout to see one of the RAM sticks and just underneath it what speed they carry. Although there is a typo on the back regarding the actual latency for this particular kit, they are actually CL19232346 and not CL2121-2164. 21, 21, 21, the Mars RGB kit have this cool blade industrial dual color tone design for the double sided aluminum IB Coolmade heat spreaders. Both sticks have a 10 layer PCB which are populated by Hynix CGR chips to offer you this 64GB density per module that run out of the box at 4000 MHz around CL192323346 and even 1T command rate. The voltage is 1.4V out of the box. They are full RGB compatible with all of the main motherboard vendors and their respective lighting software. The top light bar will facilitate all the illumination and even the Neo Forza cutout will light up. They are ITX friendly as well at around 49.5mm tall and thus I had no problems to fit them in my current test enclosure. When it comes to RGB bling they strike a nice balance between light diffusing while not being too intrusive. Of course this is out of the box and you can fine tune them as you wish via software. Let's start to test them by seeing what they can do in XMP DOCP stock form. Regarding overclocking as in a higher frequency scenario, over the stock specs I found out that it's very hard to squeeze more than 4000 MHz without going above 1.65 volts, which is not recommended because it affects chip longevity. Thus I've decided to undertake a different approach which revolves around tuning the infinity fabric from 1800 MHz to 2000 MHz. This will automatically upgrade the ratio from the stock 2 to 1 value to the coveted 1.1 which favors the AMD platform. Alas, this is highly dependent on how lucky you are with the CPU. More in depth about the Infinity Fabric I have covered it here. Then for the third testing scenario with the help of the Ryzen DRAM calculator, I also did a tutorial here, I managed to get better timings and latencies, CL16212142 for the same 1T command rate at 3600MHz since the app will not give me anything better than CL192323461 t command rate for 4000MHz. This is not necessarily a downgrade since it still preserves the 1 to 1 ratio of the infinity fabric but at 1800MHz instead of the OC 2000MHz. With this out of the way, this is what I got in Cinebench R23. So from left to right we have the three main test scenarios, stock out of the box settings, Infinity Fabric OC and the DRAM optimized OC settings. Overall the results are mixed, both the Infinity Fabric at 2000 MHz and the DRAM Ryzen Calculator OC scenarios haven't displayed any gains over the stock values for the multi and single core tests. Things changed drastically in ADA64's integrated memory bandwidth benchmark, where the scenario regarding the Infinity Fabric set at 2000 MHz takes the lead in both raw bandwidth and latency tests. However, the best latency is achieved with the 3600 MHz specs. In 7-zip, the DRAM calculator takes the lead, followed by the stock scenario. The last synthetic test comes from Geekbench which gives us an overall performance index for both single and multi-core scores, nothing special, just a copy-paste podium from 7-zip. Now for a gaming session, one benchmark run in the latest Assassin's Creed title, Valhalla. With games the numbers only tell a part of the story, so please check the video so you can see the actual fluidity. However, the OC for the Infinity Fabric takes the lead, at least in the low percentile figures. Well, there you have it guys. 
There is still a market for DDR4 and this kit from Neo Forza proves that when a generation reaches peak maturity, it will offer you almost no compromise in terms of performance out of the box. This Mars RGB 64GB DDR4 4000MHz CL19 kit is a true champion since it offers you all of the desired assets you would expect in a RAM kit from high capacity, bandwidth and good timings. The cherry on top is of course the RGB and relative low profile heatsinks with a cool and functional design. Anything better than these specs will cost you an arm and a leg from g skill for example, so it's very hard to not choose this Neo Forza kit. Thank you for watching guys and please feel free to interact with the famous like and subscribe buttons and see you in the next one. Alex up. <laughs> yeah, no, just say whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. No, because I feel self-conscious now. <laughs> Welcome to my world. When it comes to RAM, you have to tackle the right equilibrium regarding the Trinity per se. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. no. When it comes to RAM, you have to tackle the right equilibrium regarding the capacity, speed and latency. You can't overdo it in just one direction since it will affect the equation too much and thus negating any real performance gains. For example, choosing a kit with too much frequency you will end up having to sacrifice capacity and even the latency or going with a higher capacity kit you would have to settle for a low speed spec <laughs> okay <laughs>